In this video, we're going to discuss chemical reactions and chemical equations. So here is an example of a chemical reaction. On the left-hand side of the reaction arrow, we have our reactants. These are the two compounds or compounds and elements that get together to produce what's on the other side of the reaction arrow, which is the product. And then the arrow means reacts to produce. So here we would say that hydrogen and oxygen get together to produce water. In order for the reaction to be mass balanced, and there will be another review video on balancing chemical reactions here in a second, uh, we would have to have uh, some coefficients. And the coefficients mean, or moles of molecules. How many molecules? So this would say that two molecules of hydrogen would react with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water, okay? And these numbers in yellow, again, they have a name and that name is coefficients. Okay, and the orange numbers that I'm going to box here in red, these are subscripts. And those subscripts state that, for instance, in the uh, compound H2 or the element H2, one molecule of H2 is two hydrogen atoms. And this line represents the covalent bond between the two hydrogen atoms. This too means that in one molecule of oxygen, there are two oxygen atoms, where again, this line here represents the covalent bond. And actually, in this case, there is more than one covalent bond between these two oxygen atoms. And here when we're talking about water, water would be one oxygen that is bound to two hydrogen atoms. And so this subscript is talking about how many of each atom are in one molecule where the yellow numbers or the coefficients are discussing how many molecules or how many sets of molecules there are that react with another set uh, of molecules to produce a set of products. So we could easily say two molecules of hydrogen would react with one molecule of oxygen to produce two molecules of water or we could say that two moles, and a mole is a unit that's similar to a dozen, where in a dozen equals 12, a mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So it's a very, very large number, um, but we'll use it exactly the same way that we would use a dozen. So just like we could say two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen to produce uh, two molecules of water, we could also say that two dozen hydrogen molecules react with one dozen oxygen molecules to produce two dozen water molecules, or we could say two moles of hydrogen molecules react with one mole of oxygen molecules to produce two moles of water molecules. 
So all of those things are basically, uh, it's the same concept. You would use a mole similar way that you would use a dozen. It's just a grouping and it's a very, very large number because atoms and molecules are very, very small. And so we need a very, very large number to do this. Um, the other term for a mole is Avogadro's number. And the way that Avogadro's number came about, it takes 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon 12 atoms. And carbon-12 atoms are atoms that have six protons and six neutrons. So they weigh 12 atomic mass units. And it takes 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon-12 atoms to weigh 12 grams. So that's where that very, very um, large and slightly weird and awkward number comes from is that we picked the most common isotope of the element that's most common in biology to determine a number of atoms that would make the atomic mass number or the average atomic mass on the periodic table the same in atomic mass units and an atomic mass unit is roughly what a proton or a neutron weighs uh, equivalent to grams so it's just a way that the number makes it very easy to convert between atomic mass units and grams uh, just using the average atomic mass on the periodic table. There are several different types of chemical reactions. And these are synthesis or combination. It's known by terms. And an example of a combination reaction or a synthesis reaction would be the one that I had written down earlier. That 2H2 plus 1O2 will react to produce two H2Os. These reactions are characterized by multiple reactants forming a single product. The next type of reaction that we're going to discuss would be a decomposition reaction. An example of a decomposition reaction would be hydrogen peroxide decomposing to form hydrogen and oxygen. So decomposition reactions are characterized by a single reactant uh, forming multiple products. The next types of reactions would be a single displacement reaction, also known as replacement is used. These reactions are characterized by a single element by itself and some uh, occasionally, it's an ionic compound or an acid, uh, which reacts. And the if we have a metal, it will displace the metal in the compound or the hydrogen in the compound and form hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen was displaced or replaced and forming magnesium chloride. So here our um, hydrogen was displaced and replaced by magnesium. So this is a, an example of a single displacement reaction. 
Uh, it can occur when you have a metal by itself. Uh, sometimes it will occur when you have a halogen by itself, as in this case. Um, so in this case, the non-metal replaced the non-metal in the ionic compound. So on one side, we have a single element. And then we, on the other reactant is an acid or ionic compound. Acids are characterized by having a hydrogen as the first element in the chemical formula. And we'll have a discussion over acids and bases in another video. <clears throat> and they produce an ionic compound and another single element. The fourth of the five types of reaction is a double displacement. In these types of reactions, we will have two ionic compounds which react to produce two different ionic compounds. And a characteristic of this is that the metals will swap partners. So originally, sodium was with chloride in salt, table salt, or sodium chloride. And it swaps dance partners, so to speak, if we think about the cation, which is the um, metal in front, and the anion, which is the non-metal in back. Um, the metal will swap places with the metal in the other compound, and this will form from sodium will react now with this polyatomic ion, uh, or a covalently bound group of atoms that has a charge. And then the silver swaps places so that it takes on the ion that originally was with sodium. So we start out with two ionic compounds and we end with two ionic compounds. The last of the five basic types of reactions is combustion. Um, and we're fairly uh, familiar with this in our culture uh, since most of our motor vehicles run on internal combustion engines. And combustion reactions uh, occur with compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen, or carbon hydrogen, and oxygen. And so this could be compounds like methane, which is CH4, or ethanol, which is C2 H6O. Okay, both of these compounds will burn. Methane is the compound that's usually burned in Bunsen burners. Um, and then uh, we're fairly familiar in our culture that alcohol will burn, and um, that's how you tell if, some, if a alcoholic beverage is 100 proof is 100 proof is when you catch it on fire, it actually burns. And so um, some combination of carbon, hydrogen, or carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, uh, any compound, any uh, ratio of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, or just carbon, hydrogen, will work to be part of a combustion reaction. 
will react with oxygen and the products of a combustion reaction are always the same. They are always carbon dioxide and water. And even if you look at the tailpipes of cars on a winter day, you can see that water will drip out of the tailpipes when it's very, very cold and the uh, water vapor that's formed in our internal combustion engines condenses and drips out. Um, so that's the final type of reaction, which is a combustion reaction. Here are the review questions for this topic. Please pause your video and answer the questions, and I will return in 10 seconds to discuss the answers. For this chemical reaction, you'll notice that we have a single reactant and multiple products. That is a decomposition reaction because sodium carbonate is decomposing to form sodium oxide and carbon dioxide. And as I mentioned in the previous explanation, when explaining number two, um, the compounds on the left side of the reaction arrow are reactants, and the compounds on the right side of the reaction arrow are products. So if I was going to identify the reactant of the chemical equation, it would be Na2. CO3 or sodium carbonate.